Well, my name is Richard Florida. I'm a university professor, which is like the highest kind of professor at the University of Toronto. I teach in the Rotman School of Management and our newly founded School of Cities. I write books. I write books like The Rise of the Creative Class and The New Urban Crisis. Um, I helped establish a big, big digital media property on cities and urbanism called City Lab. And I run a founded a consulting company called The Creative Class Group, where we work with real estate companies, development companies, banks, high tech companies, work with family foundations, governments and cities worldwide. At the Toronto Real Estate Forum, I, I really tried to talk about how Canada's cities and their downtowns are recovering from the two and a half plus years of the COVID-19 pandemic. I'm an American by birth uh, and have lived in Canada for now a decade and a half. And both my kids were born here, so they're dual citizens. And I work with cities all over North America and the world. What I really think has happened is that there's a yin and yang for what's happening to Canada's cities. On the one hand, when it comes to where and how people live, Canada's cities have fared really well. You know, in the US, big cities like New York, Chicago, San Francisco, Los Angeles have really been hurt by this wave of crime, urban disorder, and a lot of people moved out. They moved to suburbs, to exurbs, to rural areas, or to smaller cities like Nashville or Austin or Miami. We've seen a little bit of that in Canada, but I live in Toronto. No one that I know with a family moved out of our neighborhood. They all decided they loved the city. That's because Canada's cities are family friendly. We have good urban schools. The U.S. doesn't have that. So what happened in the U.S. when all of these young people who used to be single or coupled without children, as they began to get to the age of having a family in the pandemic, they, they scattered. So on the one hand, Canada's cities are doing really good on that dimension. But when it comes to the way people work and return to the office, Canada's cities are actually lagging behind their U.S. and European counterparts. Um, we've seen far less people return to work. One statistic we have is, is Canadians are working uh, at home an average of 2.2 days. And if you look at all the advanced other countries, it's 1.5 days. So, so we still haven't rebounded and our downtowns have suffered. And what I talked about, we had a wonderful panel, was what are the things cities around the world and Canadian cities in particular need to do to remake their downtowns? And I think that the general conclusion was, this is a trying time, there are big challenges, but we can remake our cities and downtowns better. You know, you know, cities were never supposed to be just about work or city neighborhoods. They're always more successful if they're mixed, if there's working, living, playing, and I call connecting. And that's what we talked about, how you can remake downtown, convert some of those older office bu buildings to residential uses and much needed housing. But, you know, people might not like the traditional office and we're no longer tethered. I always say this, we used to be tethered to a desk with a phone and a phone line and a computer and a computer line. And people would bring us sticky notes with our messages. Now you can work from anywhere. So then it's, it's not work from home work as work for the office. It's really, it's not a binary. People are finding new ways of working. They're working from coffee shops and co-working places. They're working from friends' homes or libraries. How do we create what urbanists call those third places that are neither work nor home, those exciting places. How do we foster those collisions? One thing we've seen in our downtowns is they've been evolving away from work for the past 20 years. They've been adding residential, hospitality, hotels, tourism. But if you look at Toronto's downtown where we are today, we're in a convention, a convention center designed to bring people together. It's a connecting plaza. We're right next to an arena. There's a stadium all the cultural institutions. So we've seen this evolution of downtown from a place people just work to a place people live, work, play, and connect, engage in cultural entertainment activities. And that's what we have to do more. And on the flip side, our suburban areas are adding more work. It, that's so fascinating to me. Our suburban areas that used to be just dormitories for people to sleep, now they're adding offices and office plazas. And, and I guess the thing that, that I always come back to is something I learned about 20 years ago when I was interviewing these people I called the creative class, knowledge workers, people who work in finance, industry, uh, insurance, real estate, entertainment, media, high tech. They told me they want to work on great projects with great people in great spaces, in great places. And I think that goes double today. It's not like we want to sit in home in, 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 in our bedrooms or spare rooms in our PJs all day. 
We crave human connection. We crave other people. We crave this interaction and spontaneous collision. I think that's what we're beginning to realize, that we have to redesign our cities and our downtowns to be arenas, not, not just containers for work, life, or play, but really arenas for connection, collaboration, and collision. Pandemics are traumatic events, and, and people forget this. We are barely on the other side of this pandemic. So we're almost suffering from a kind of post-traumatic stress syndrome. We, we spent two years habituating ourselves to Zoom, being at home, not being out in the world. And, and I think the real estate industry is still adjusting. We're relearning how to work. We're relearning how to connect. I think it's sinking in that, that it's not going back to the old way. Now, look, I, my own view is that remote work, which has been ticking up, it was about 1% in 1980, 2.5% in the year 2000, 5% in the year 2015 or so. It's now, some people say it's 20%. I think it's going to shake out about 10 to 15%. So the whole world is not going to change. But people are going to work differently and they're going to live differently. They're going to want work-life balance. And I think the real estate industry is adjusting to this. The, the analog I use for this when it comes to cities is cities like Toronto or New York, London went through this enormous wave of deindustrialization 30 years ago when the factories closed. Cities used to be about making things. Those factory areas like the Distillery District or Liberty Village, all these great neighborhoods, Portland's, are now being remade as residential areas, places to work, live and play. Yeah, we're going to wake up. And I think over the next year, we're going to begin to see this resetting process with the real estate industry.